the significance. What's the significance in this deepest, deeper sense that I'm I'm not talking about the significance that you might play in relative to somebody else's life, or there's a lot of ways of being significant to other people in life, but I'm talking about a different, almost like a cosmic, a cosmic sense, right? In a cosmic sense, uh, a human being, we, we know that we have this unusual capacity for a high degree of consciousness. We are the most conscious creatures that we know that we know. It doesn't mean that there aren't more out there, but we're, we're, the, we're the most conscious ones that we know of. Which might be kind of astounding to, to, to think of when you think of sometimes how we behave individually and especially collectively. But nonetheless, consciousness is this amazing gift in life that life, almost like life gives itself Consciousness is this amazing, amazing, amazing thing. Consciousness liter quite literally lights up the world, right? So imagine that the, the sun's out there as it is, and it's, it's this massive fur inferno, this furnace that's generating, you know, heat and rays and all, all sorts of other things throwing out through the universe, right? But without consciousness, Consciousness is what, is what interacts, say, with something like, like the sun and creates light. The light of the world isn't the sun. The sun doesn't light up the whole, you know, our part of the universe, of our part of the galaxy. It's human consciousness that does that, right? It's kind of like, um, imagine there's an immense sound right? Unless there is an ear, an eardrum, and a brain stem, and a nervous system to translate with a basically vibrations, silent vibrations. Unless those vibrations hit an eardrum and become sound and have, con and then maybe have consciousness to recognize it, as sound or recognize what, or what it is or where it came from or what it is. All that requires a kind of consciousness to recognize, right? And it, even, even our minds to take what is essentially a vibratory pattern floating through space and turn that into sound we hear. Now, you may think, well, that's a kind of an interesting fact, but it's actually kind of amazing if you really contemplate it, that even the experience of, uh, of a sound, if there's not some conscious being, at, to, at some level, con maybe not conscious as a human being is, but at some level, there's just going to be vibratory patterns. There's not actually going to be this thing we call sound. And just like if there's not a couple of, if there's not eyes to open and consciousness to peer upon or into or out into the universe, then the universe is, bas is basically fundamentally unconscious. Now I'm talking about, I'm not speculating here. So we could go into speculation if the universe is conscious and all that without some conscious entity but I just want to talk about, not get into speculation, but actually come back to our experience. Um, and there's a paradox in here that I think is, is just so enlivening, right? This paradox of our human smallness, right? So I'm say I'm one of what is there now on the on the earth? Six billion of us, something like that, seven billion, something like that. I could have that wrong. So pardon me if I if I uh, misspoke on the number, but it's somewhere, I think somewhere between five and seven billion, right? I'm, I'm one of those. And then if we quote all the other life forms, then I'm in one sense, I shrink in into even smaller significance. I'm a part of this on a relative level, we're not talking about an awakened, 
enlightened level at for at the moment not we're not there yet we're we're we're, we're kind of stepping in that direction right um So there's this, there's, there's our, we all know, I think, <laughs> unless we're sort of <laughs> narcissist, you know, narcissistically inflated egos of our, of our, of our kind of smallness. Again, that doesn't have anything to do with our worth or lack of worth or anything like that. That's a whole different issue. And then paradoxically, we can also begin to realize the significance of a human life. It's in, in a certain way, uh, the universe or existence, let's call it existence, is being conscious through you. If you remove all the conscious beings in life, there is no consciousness of life at all. It's just would be sort of a uh, an unconscious, brute unfolding of whatever conditioning or laws there were with no, no, no consciousness, no, no experience, no entities experiencing, noticing, um, experiencing, uh, gaining knowledge, all that could be absent. So imagine a world, well, you, we can't even imagine a world really without real conscious entities in it because it would be so completely and utterly different than the one we occupy, right? There are conscious entities in our world all over the place. Not only human beings, I would suggest, lots of beings are conscious. Human beings tend to display the highest degree of consciousness, but with that is its own sort of you know, challenge, because consciousness is one of the more dangerous things that life can, can, can create or put into itself, right? Consciousness can be, as we're getting, being fully conscious, <laughs> that's not so dangerous. But the, 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 but the path there is, there's, it's fraught with a lot of peril, Right? And, and we're, humanity has always been in there, somewhere in the middle of being more and more conscious, evolutionary throughout history, a very slow, slow march towards more and more consciousness. What, what comes with consciousness is the ability to reflect. So that's the other part. When we begin, we're all conscious. We don't just notice that almost like it says in the, uh, in the Bible, you are the light of the world. And it's from the standpoint of consciousness, that's absolutely true without consciousness without say you listening hearing feeling sensing being connected all that would be missing from existence which would be a kind of existence we almost can't even imagine and, and a, a basically fully unconscious existence. Fortunately, that's not what we have. We have existence which produces conscious, conscious beings, and we're a part of that. And that becomes the means through which existence, life, if you want to, you know, make it a little more approachable, life becomes aware of itself. And in a certain sense, that's pretty close to at least a certain variety of awakening experience. And we go from feeling like I, little me, negotiating this immensity of life, right? From, and that's where the, our consciousness in a certain sense is being funneled into and operated through that, that sort of ego entity or imagined entity or certainly ego identity, right? But, when we have this, that deeper shift, that awaken, awakening, of course, we wake up out of that isolation and separation of the individual. And it feels very, very much like being the consciousness of, uh, of the world. <laughs> 